Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have something really cool prepared for you guys. I have Auntie Chitra with me today so we can put this video together. I first want to thank Sanskriti USA. I want to thank Sarab from Sanskriti for sponsoring all of the items that you're going to see in the video today. All of their information, such as their address, their phone number, and their website, email, all of that will be down in the description box below. So if you want to contact them to purchase any products, or if you want to go to their store, all of that information will be down below. So basically what we're going to be doing in today's video is we're going to show you guys how to set up a puja baby or a space where um, a Hindu would have their prayers. We're going to show you guys all the items that we're using, where things need to go, and um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, everyone, so I'm going to start to show you guys how we set up the puja space. So the first step is to go ahead and take your baby, any size baby that you have, and that will fit all of your things and your sarjam and your mortise on it. And basically, you're going to fill it up about three quarters of the way with soil or dirt. And then once you go ahead and pat that dirt down and you get it nice and compact, you're going to go ahead and take some all-purpose flour and you're going to make a border all the way around the baby, as you see that I did there. And then you're going to go ahead and go in all different directions. You're going to go north to south, east to west, northwest to southwest, northeast to southeast, as you guys are seeing here. Basically, you're drawing four lines all the way across the baby. These lines are in representation of the different planetary deities or the Navgrahas. And once you make all of your different lines in all of the different directions, you're going to go ahead and you're going to put an ohm in the middle. Basically, by putting the Om and all of these different lines, it is showing the different gods that you're going to be doing your puja or prayers to, that this is their seat and this is the place where they need to come. Now, this next step is 100% optional. You do not have to do what we're doing. All that is required is that you put the dirt down and you put the design with the flower. But if you wanted to get a little more fancy and you wanted to make it look even more festive, you can go ahead and cover the baby with colored rice, just as we are doing here. Now, for this part, you can go ahead and cover the baby with whatever design you want and with whatever colors that you want. All that is required again is you make sure that you put all the different lines with the flower. So this way you can represent all the different planetary deities and all of their directions. So as you guys can see, Auntie Chitra and I are just following the design that we already made. And we're just filling in all of the different spots with different colors of rice. So we're using some red, some blue, some yellow, some orange, purple, white. Whatever colors you have on hand or whatever colors you were able to make by coloring your own rice, you can go ahead and put them down at this time. And again, like I said, if you did not want to follow the design you already put onto the baby, you can make whatever design that you want. Now this is the final baby with all the different colors and the finishing touches that we put on it. Again, I just want to reiterate, putting all of this colored rice is totally optional. It just depends on what you have access to and what you are able to do and what you choose to do. So at this point, we are going to begin to lay things on top of the baby. So this way we can show you what exactly you need to put on it. The first step that I always have for anybody who is setting up a puja space is to make sure you get every single item that you need for your puja in one spot and just lay them out. And then you can sort through them and set them in their correct spaces. So this is step one, put everything in one place. And then I'm going to show you guys exactly what we have here and where it is going to go. All right, everyone. So these are all of the items that Sanskriti USA um, sponsored for the video today. As you guys can see, we have the baby in the middle that we already decorated and showed you guys how to put together. So Auntie Chichi is going to go ahead and point to all of the things that they gave me and things that would be required if you were doing a puja. And then I'll go ahead and tell you what they are. So we have sugarcane in the back there. We have ghee. That's the Philardias. We have some sugarcane juice and the coconut water. And the coconut water, sugarcane juice, and sugarcane, that is specifically for the Shiva Lingam Puja. And then we have our Hawan Kund with the dupe or the wooden sticks inside. And these are the Sarjam packs that Sanskriti sells. And basically it has all the essential Puja items that you would need. Depending on the types of Pujas that you're doing, you might want to grab like two or three, just so this way you have enough of everything. But basically you have the cotton balls or the wicks to go in the Diyas, that's to light them. You have Supari, and that is a representation of the god if you don't have their statue. 
you have the Ganga gel or holy water, you have Elaichi and cloves, you have the red thread or muli, and you have camphor, and then you have your dye, your chandan, as well as your sindur, and the black till. Some people use this for their Shiva Lingam Puja, um, some don't, so depending on if you use it or not, you would make use of it. And Google. that is Google. And then that's the Hawan Samagri. That is the Atar or the um, perfume. And that's honey. And that's the wicks. Some Isn't more wicks. With this. Yeah. You can decide which one fits better in your Diaz. Nutmeg. And that's nutmeg. And then you have your incense. And this right here is called Kasturi. Um, we don't really make use of it in our puja, but if you do, um, they have it in this box for you. And just in case you are a person that doesn't have a lot of murtis or pictures, in these boxes they do have little pictures or images of the different Hindu goddesses um, or the gods. And there's different assorted pictures in each one usually. So some of the other items that Sanskriti sponsored for this video includes a large tari. We like to have one of these on hand so this way we can put all of our sarjam or all of the materials that we're going to use during the puja in them. It just makes things easier. We also have the colored rice for when we do the Navgraha or the planets puja. We also have some smaller taris and these would be used for your arti or the plates that you make with the parsad for the different gods and goddesses. And then this right here is a smaller little um, saucer and some diyas. And as I was saying, you have the little saucer and you would put a dia on top of the saucer. And this entire structure goes on top of your big lota or your khalsa. And that basically represents Varun Dev. And that's what you would use for your Khalsa Puja during your, your Jandi or whatever prayers you're having. And within your Dia, of course, you'd have to put your wick and your ghee and you would light that up. And I also just wanted to mention again, this Puja setup is just for a simple Puja, not a very extravagant and um, complex Puja. So we have the different, um, some of the mainstream Hindu gods and goddesses on the flags there that are commonly raised. So you have Lakshmi, Shiva, Saraswati, Ganesh, Krishna and Hanuman. I'll be honest, a lot of people will raise different colors for the different gods. It is totally up to your own preference, what your priest says and what your family does usually. Another big part of prepping all of the sarjam or the materials that you would need for your puja includes washing and preparing your leaves and flowers. So for this puja, I would need neem leaves, bale leaves, tulsi leaves, dube grass, mango leaves, madar flowers, and assorted flowers for the different pujas. Now once you've gone over all of your sarjam and gotten that prepared and you've gotten your leaves and your flowers washed, it is time to start setting things on the baby in their proper places. So the first thing you're going to do is put Ganesh, Lakshmi and Saraswati on your baby. Now they go to the front, more towards the left of the baby. Ganesh is put there as the remover of obstacles, while their Lakshmi is put there to guide your way throughout the puja and light your way. And Saraswati is there to give you knowledge throughout your puja so you can continue to learn more. After we place Lakshmi, Ganesh, and Saraswati on the baby, we're going to go ahead and make our Khalsa, which is a representation of Varun Dev and is another integral part of the puja. It's called Khalsa Puja. Now, we like to do this because it goes in the middle of the baby, so we want to know how much space we're working with. So that's why it's good to put that down before you put Lakshmi, Saraswati, and Ganesh, or right after you put them. But basically, it is your big lota that you fill up with water. You put five mango leaves coming out of it. Then you put a saucer on top with your dia that you filled with a wick and your ghee. And at that point, once it's done, you're going to go ahead and put it right in the middle of your baby, right behind Lakshmi, Saraswati, and Ganesh. Now, once you've set the khalsa in the middle of your baby, we're going to set the rest of the murtis on top of the baby. So in the upper left-hand corner, all the way to the end, we are going to put Lord Shiva. And then right in front of him, if you had a Shiva Lingam, you would go ahead and put that right in front of him. And then right next to Shiva, right on the right of him, you would put Krishna in whatever form you're worshipping as, him as. Whether it be Krishna by himself, baby Krishna, or Radha Krishna like you see we have here. And then lastly, all the way in the right hand corner, more towards the upper side, you would put Hanuman. And now that we set all of the main gods onto the baby that we will be doing puja for, we're going to put on the nine pawn leaves where you will be worshipping the nine planetary deities or the Navgrahas. So basically what you're going to go ahead and do is you are going to take your pawn leaves and you need nine pawn leaves for this. And you're going to go ahead and rip off the stem that's on the bottom and you're going to rip the tip off of the top as you see Auntie Chitra is doing. And then what you're going to go ahead and do is place them all 
right next to each other, three in a row with three rows, and you are going to point them upwards. Now, once you go ahead and point them upwards and you get them all laid down, you're gonna put a little patch of white rice onto each of them. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and put the color that corresponds to each different Navgraha, or you could even put their grain. A lot of people do it very differently when they do their offerings. This is the way that we traditionally do it, just with the white rice, and then we would put a supari on top. And the supari is a representation, being that we do not have their murtis or their pictures. And this is just a small Navgraha offering that you would do for any type of simple puja, this is not the full Navgraha Puja where you would raise their little flags. And once you get those nine pond leaves set up representing the different Navgrahas, you want to go ahead and get their Parsad and their offerings ready. So in a little Tari, it's always a good idea to have nine different colors of cloth that represent them depending on their colors. And then also you would want just a little bit of Parsad and a couple of fruits. Um, so this way you could put down on that pond leaf when you're doing the prayer later. And it's always a good idea before you start your puja to go ahead and have nine pieces of that red thread ripped off and then rolled into those little circles as you see there. That's going to be used almost like a mala on top of that supari so this way you can worship them. And as you guys can see here, it's very simple. All the ingredients are put down and prepped for when your puja starts. And what we're doing next is taking that large tari that we had and we're just going to fill it up with the different sarjam or the different ingredients that would be needed throughout the entire puja. So into those little diyas, I'm just going to put the main ingredients. So I have some chandan, the sindor, the dai, as well as the camphor. And then we're also going to put some other ingredients on it as well, such as the elaichi or the cardamom seeds, also the cloves. And then we're also going to go ahead and put down our honey, our ganga gel, our atar or the perfume, and also those incense sticks. Any items that you would normally use, you'd put in here. And another thing that you want to place on the baby is a small tari with some flowers and a dia that you filled with a wick and some ghee. That will be used for your arti. And you can leave that depending on the space that you have towards the left front side of your baby, or you can leave it off to the side of the baby. Just know that throughout the entire puja, you will need that little plate with the dia and the flowers. So this way, as you're doing arti to the different gods, you'll have it right there. And it can also be used at the end of the puja when you're doing arti to the different people in attendance of your puja. So at this point, all of your items should be on top of the baby and all of your sarjams should be set up. And again, I already said your leaves and flowers should be washed and put to the side. Now at this point, we're going to work on the hawan kund or what should go into this fire that is used during the ceremony. So into the hawan kund, we always put a piece of foil to line it. The reason being is that makes for easy cleanup throughout the process and it also preserves your hawan kund and you don't ruin it over time. So on top of that foil wrap, we put a little wick and then we also put three pieces of that dupe or the wood and we put it in a triangle formation as you see there. That's going to make sure that it lights much easier as well. Now into a small tari, we're going to put the ingredients that we will need when it comes time to do our hawan. So into that tari, we're going in with some samagari, a piece of fruit, some parsad, some camphor, some elaichi or cardamom, and you would also drizzle on just a little bit of honey. And the final step, once you've gotten everything put on top of your baby and you've prepped all of the materials that you need, you're going to start working on the food items or the parsad or your offerings that you're going to give to the different gods and goddesses. So I will go through by the different goddesses and gods what they need on their plate, but this is just a sample plate or a general plate. So if you were doing a full Ganesh Puja, you would need some Ladu. And if you wanted to, you can add some Pera, Parsad, Purian Sweet Rice, and Assorted Fruits onto his Tari. Now onto that same Tari, you would also add some money, the orange flag that you'll raise for him if you're raising one, and some flowers on the Tari. And for a Lakshmi Puja, what you would need to put into her Tari is some Lapsi and Puri, Sweet Rice, Parsad, and some Neem Leaves. And you may also add pera, assorted fruits, and a water or a dried coconut. And of course, if you're raising her flag, you need to put money, the pink flag, as well as flowers on her tari. And for Saraswati, you would also need some lapsi and puri, some sweet rice, some parsad, and neem leaves. And then you may add pera, assorted fruits. And if you are doing her full puja, you would need to put the white flag, some money, and some flowers on top of the tari as well. And for the Shiva Puja, you would need to put on his tari some pera, pomegranate seeds, sugarcane, parsad, puri and sweet rice, assorted fruits, 
and you may add the purple or peach flag and flowers and money onto the tari if you're raising his flag. And for the Shiva Lingam Puja, you would need seven bale leaves. Now you would use more or less depending on your own tradition or the availability. You would need madar flowers and for the Lingam Puja, you'd need milk, sugar water, coconut water, sugar cane juice, ghee, dahi with no salt, as well as some Ganga gel. Now for your Hanuman Puja, you would need three or five roach, preferably five, or an odd number, apples and parsad. You may also add para, puri, sweet rice, and assorted fruits. Now, of course, if you're doing his jandi or he raising his flag, you put a red flag, money, and flowers on the tari. As for Lord Krishna, if you were doing his full puja, you'd need pandri, parsad, and assorted fruits on his tari. You may also decide to add puri and sweet rice and para. And of course, if you're raising his flag, you need the blue or white flag, some money, and flowers on the tari as well. And here we have it, everyone, the finished general puja baby. As you guys can see in the upper right hand corner, we have all of the flags laid out, depending on which ones you will raise. On the lower right hand corner, we have a big tari with all of the assorted sarjam that we would need. On the bottom right hand corner, we have two taris filled with things that we would need for the Navbraha puja or their offering, and that goes for the nine palm leaves that you see on the bottom right hand corner as well. And you see we have our Tulsi plant all the way in the back left. You want to have that so this way when you're making your offerings, you can take off a leaf and you can offer it as well. And of course, everything is here and set up as you saw from the rest of the video. And I really, really hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new and got something from it. And I just want to let everybody know that I try to respect everybody's customs and their religions to the best of my ability and the best of my knowledge. So I truly ask the same of you guys just to be respectful in the comment section down below. Let's all support each other and lift each other up and let's just learn something new from this video. If you enjoyed this video today, please don't forget to give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. Come on over and become part of the Matthews Guyanese Cooking family. Make sure you're clicking that bell notification icon and you'll be notified every time I post my newest videos. And of course, you gotta leave those comments down below so I know what to do or make next. And of course, I wanna give a big shout out to Saurav from Sanskriti USA once again. All of their information will be down in the description box below. You guys can go over there and buy all of your general puja items for any puja. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again.